Joining us now, former Secret Service Chief Psychologist Marisa Rendazzo and retired NYPD officer Jill Snyder. Jill, in this era, shooters tend to leave behind some kind of digital trail hinting at a motive. But here, this gunman apparently had no social media footprint. How does that change the approach for law enforcement regarding a motive? Good morning. So they're really going to have to dig deep into his personal life via his classmates, um, anyone that he spoke with in the neighborhood. I'm sure that his family is going to be really important in this investigation. And from what I've heard thus far, the family is cooperating. Um, but that's really the only way that they're going to gain any insight. I find it a little strange that a 20 year old uh, in this day and age does not have more of a social media presence, um, which is making the investigation somewhat more challenging because most times in a situation like this where you have a 20 year old gunman they are generally going to have put something out there that's going to give a small glimpse into why they did it and i think that's what's really confusing the american public not knowing is scarier than knowing yeah marisa as as dan pointed out there's just a lot we don't know about this shooter but we do know he was young, just 20 years old, described by former classmates as a loner. They say he was bullied. He was registered as a Republican, but made a political donation to a Democratic aligned group back in 2021. The FBI says they haven't determined whether any ideology played a role here, that he had no documented mental health issues. Do you think they will eventually learn the motive? And how important is that? <laughs> And they absolutely will eventually learn the motive, but but I think what's important to understand is that what we're seeing with this person is actually not inconsistent with what we've seen from attackers and assassins and near assassins in our political system over the past several decades. One of the things that the Secret Service did a while ago was a deep analysis on anyone who had assassinated or attacked or come close to it, not only public officials and candidates, but, but public figures as well. And they weren't a ton of information that now feeds into how they investigate threats. So just as Joe was saying, I absolutely agree. There, we will find out that he had engaged in some communication to others. It might not be on the traditional social media platforms. And certainly as we're here Hearing him being described as someone who is very shy, someone who may have been bullied extensively, I'm not surprised that we're not seeing things on sort of the traditional social media mm. platforms. But I would I would guess, and I think there is a high likelihood that we are going to see that he communicated some of his thoughts and intentions in other ways, whether it's on gaming communication platforms, um, in a in a disguised way on chat forums. We will find something out, and he may well have communicated it to people around him as well, whether it's to neighbors or to friends or to classmates or to family. There may well have been those communications as well. Yeah, FBI officials say their technical experts are exploiting his phone and other electronic communications as part of looking into his background and a potential motive. Marisa, this reporting that we have that the roof where the gunman was positioned was previously identified as a possible security vulnerability, combined with that video we showed of the bystanders pointing and yelling about someone crawling on the roof, if this was a security failure, what could have caused it? We just don't know yet. Just as Dan DeLuce was saying a moment ago, there are so many unanswered questions about this aspect of it. And the Secret Service will be looking into this. The FBI's investigation will be looking into this. We've got congressional committees who've announced an intention to look into this as well. They will do this. This after action report is going to be so critical for all of us in the security industry to understand how he was able to get into that position. What I'll tell you also is that one of the things that we have seen prior to these assassination attempts and attacks on public officials and public figures is that the individuals who carry this out follow what we call in the field a pathway to violence. They do research on how to access uh, wh whatever target they're looking at. They figure out vantage points. They often rehearse. So that behavior may be available to investigators as well as we look into and learn more about this particular attack. President Biden also said he wants an independent review of the actions that would be separate from the Department of Justice specifically in their approach here. Jill, when you have high profile events like this that involve local, state and federal law enforcement and multiple agencies within each of those categories, what is the hardest part of communicating and coordinating between those agencies in the heat of the moment like this? 
usually the first issue is identifying who's in charge. In a situation like this, it was rapidly unfolding. I mean, um, rally goers were pointing out that the gunman was climbing up on the roof. I am sure that both Secret Service and local law enforcement agencies had identified that, as we know now, as potential vulnerability. They most likely swept the building before. But as you see in that video, the gunman was highly motivated. Having people point and yell, having law enforcement climb up a ladder, as we've seen in videos, and you know, go face to face with him at some point, he was motivated to do this. He wanted to do this, as Marissa said, most likely pre-planning was involved. He definitely knew what he was doing and planned to execute this. Marissa, the GOP convention starts today in Milwaukee. Trump is there. The Secret Service says it isn't planning any changes in security protocols. Are you surprised by that? No, because what I know is that their security protocols for events like this, for rallies all, is, is to plan and prepare and practice again and again and again. What we don't see, what goes on behind the scenes prior to any event like this in campaign or any public official presentation appearance, is not only the physical protection that you see and the layers of security details and, and counter assault teams and counter sniper teams, but you also have an entire division of the Secret Service and of the FBI and of state and local law enforcement that are looking into the behavior of people who may have an idea or an intention to try to engage in harm toward any of these people that are under protection. So there are threat investigations, threat assessments going on, protective intelligence investigations, where people are looking into any online discussion, any in-person discussion that's been reported to local law enforcement or, or state or, or FBI or Secret Service of someone who's expressing some idea, maybe they're expressing it as a joke, maybe they're talking about wanting to do something harmful, maybe they're talking about wanting to go out in a blaze of glory. So many of these attackers are motivated in part by a desire to be killed by law enforcement, a suicide by a cop. So the Secret Service Division, FBI's threat assessment entities, all are taking a close look prior to an event like this to see who's expressing any of this ideology. And so I wanna remind everyone who's listening, an absolutely vital contribution that anyone can make is that if they hear of someone who's talking about wanting to do something harmful, whether they think they are joking or not, or talking about wanting to lay their life down here, this is important to get to local law enforcement or to the Secret Service or to FBI so they can take a close look at what that person is thinking about and possibly planning to do. Jill, it hasn't even been two days since this attack at Trump's rally, but are there any lessons that may be applied in Milwaukee? I think just understanding if a rally goers are pointing to something, a quicker response could have been done. But we are going to see months of investigation unfold. We are going to see scrutiny on both Secret Service and law enforcement. Um, we're just we're really going to have to watch and see if protocols were followed initially if protocols throughout the rally and subsequent events were correct and what can we learn from the situation going forward again we can't make any judgment we can't say someone did something wrong we have to really watch and see well ladies both of you have been an invaluable resource to all of us in understanding how all this unfolded and what happens next jill snyder thank you marisa rendazzo you'll be back with us in just a few minutes up